Chapter 2. The Witches on the Cliff The dark green gingerbread-style mansion with gold trim and black shutters was perched precariously on the rocky cliffs. Its roof, shaped like a witch's cap, was obscured in mist and, circle and encircled by screeching crows. Is the dark fairy to join us? asked Ursula as the four witches made their way to the odd sister's home. No, no, water and fire do not mix, said Lucinda as Ursula laughed. Ursula wondered why the sister witches so feared a convergence between her and the dark fairy. We fear nothing, Ursula, but we see and hear everything, Lucinda said casually, giving her the side eye as they headed up the crooked staircase with creak, which creaked with every step. Ursula mused over the many locations in which she'd visited the house. She wondered if it grew chicken-like legs and moved on its own steam, or if the sisters just conjured it wherever they desired. Surely it was simply summoned, but she loved the image of the sisters riding in their witch's cap house, powered by giant leathery chicken legs, the witches cackling within the entire way. The thought made her laugh as they entered the queer little house in which she'd so often been a guest. The location might have changed often, but the house with its quaint little kitchen remained the same. The sun shone through a large round window on the main wall that looked out over the que old queen's apple tree and the waves crashing onto the rocks. <laughs> the shelves were filled with beautiful teak teacups in dif differing patterns as if collected from various sets. Ursula wouldn't be surprised if the sisters simply simply slipped cups they fancied into their purses. She wondered if each cup had a unique story, the story of its owner and of its encounter with the dreaded sisters three. Which of those cups, Ursula wondered, belonged to the old queen or to the horrible sisters Anastasia and Drizella, and which belonged to Maleficent. Off the kitchen was the main room with a large fireplace. Its mantle was imposing and flanked by two enormous ravens that gazed out on into the nothingness with steely eyes. The room had an eerie light colored by the stained glass windows with images of the witch's various adventures. One of the windows had a simple red apple, it was lonely and sad. Ursula thought, but perhaps that was because she had heard the old queen's tale from the sisters many years before. How many stories had she been told sitting near that fire when she deigned to take human form? That human form, that creature, she thought. It wasn't like, it wasn't at all to her liking. She felt small and weak when hiding in her human shell. Her voice also sounded different, not as booming or demanding. There was no there was no power in it. No majesty. She couldn't fathom how humans had survived as long as they had in those weak sacks of flesh, always in pain, always walking or sitting on hard furniture. It was horrible, that human nonsense. At least she had Lucinda, Ruby, Martha, and their charming cat Flans to distract her from the pains of being human. Flans, the sister's turquoise shell cat, blinked her black rimmed golden eyes slowly at the witches in salutation. Hello, Flans, Ursula said, smiling. Flans adjusted her paws and blinked again, welcoming Ursula to her home. Flans could see through the sea witch's human form to the creature she really was, and the cat thought that creature was even more beautiful than the form the witch sea witch had taken so she could walk among humans. Oh, it was beautiful enough, Ursula's human guise. She had large, dark eyes and full, deep brown hair that framed her heart-shaped face. Anyone would find her beautiful, but Flans loved the sea witch's true design, and it was easy to see the witch preferred it as well. Flans watched as her, sis as the her witches scuttled about the kitchen getting the tea ready for Ursula who had her feet propped on a little cushioned stool Ruby had b brought for her. Flans's witches had been quite unlike themselves since their little sister Circe had left. 
and Flans was growing worried they would wither from their constant fretting. But what troubled the cat more was how quiet the sisters had become. She was used to their insane ramblings and manic chatter, but now the house was almost unbearably quiet without Circe to fawn over. Now the sisters would simply sit and mope, uninspired even to cause their unusual mayhem. And when they spoke, they did so coherently as they could manage, in an attempt to make their sister Circe happy when she finally came home. Flans presumed that if the sisters had hearts within their hollow, hateful shells, they had been broken the day the witch's little sister left with hate in her, in her eyes, anger in her words, and a deep sadness in her heart. Circe wasn't like her sisters, Flans mused. She loved, and Circe felt Lucinda, Ruby, and Martha had finally gone too far with their magic, hurting someone she had once cared for very deeply. Flans didn't blame the sisters for what they had done to the prince, the curse ha they had helped set on him, or the torments they had rained upon his head. They had almost driven him mad, and with good reason. He had broken Circe's heart and treated her rather sh shabbily. Everything they had done, all the meddling and scheming was for their little sister. But Circe was terribly angry with them for the part they had played in the curse, which had sent the prince fur further into his greedy, hurtful ways, nearly destroying kingdoms in the process. No, Circe couldn't forgive her sisters, and Flance was almost sure she would never speak to them again as their punishment. The beautiful feline ho hoped the visit from Ursula would inspire a wee bit of weak wickedness and bring her mistresses out of the deep depression they'd been suffering. But Flans's musings were shattered by screams that caused Martha to drop the glass tea teapot, breaking it into tiny shards on the black and white kitchen floor. Ruby was sobbing. The glass sparkled like diamonds, dazzling in Ursula's eyes. Soon, Ruby's sobs were so severe, she found herself in Ursula's arms as the sea witch tried to calm her theatrical ravings. Flance thinks Circe will never speak to us again. Soon, all the sisters were screaming and crying, wringing their hands and ripping their dresses. Martha started pulling her hair, and Lucinda was ripping at the feathers in hers, casting them about the room like a madwoman. Ladies, stop! boomed Ursula's voice, and the sisters could see, cast onto the wall behind the ele elegant human body Ursula was hiding in, the shadow of her true form dominating the kitchen. Silence, Ursula commanded. The sisters fell quiet. You will see your sister, little sister again, I promise you. But first, there's something I will need from you.